Love Tuesday for you and your family. Today, as we unfold the mystery of Jesus Christ redeeming us from the curse of the law, blessing us with the blessing of Abraham, we must comprehend that there is a deluge of awesome, unveiled goodness and mercy pouring out into our life because of the redemption of Jesus Christ, the word of his cross that has the power to have delivered us from all that had come to harm and destroy us. So let's pray together. Ephesians chapter 3, in the middle there to the end, as we bow our knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you, Father, would grant according to the riches of your glory for each one to be strengthened with might by your Spirit in their inner man, that Christ would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, each one of us, being rooted and grounded in love, would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Father, now unto you, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To you be glory in the church, world, this kingdom of God without end. Amen and amen. Father, I thank you for the supernatural anointing that abides in your word, that as it is unveiled your children experience your love your mercy your grace your truth your kindness your way of walking on the face of this earth and we give you thanksgiving and praise in jesus name amen and amen well tomorrow i will turn 70, which means that I will have completed 70 years on this earth. As a testimony, I want you to know that during my teen years, as there was a great propensity to be in drug abuse and drug use, um, I, I can remember right when I first got my driver's license at 16, we would go taking LSD, smoking marijuana, being drunk, high as a kite, tripping out of our mind, and go into this charismatic meeting. Now, you've got to understand how awesome God is. He would drag a handful of these drugged out kids into the basement of a Baptist church, they would be praying in tongues. We would not know what they were doing, and we would be mocking them. The spirits in us would just be literally cursing everything they were doing, only to find out that the greater one, the awesome God of whom had been that we were part of his sacrifice, he already destroyed every principality and power that was working in and through us. We had no idea, but God did. Then the whole scenario of my life crashing into mental insanity, from drug abuse to going into the mental hospital as a lifetime unrecoverable, insane individual that lost the birth date, I didn't even have a birthday, didn't have a name any longer. I was a ward of the government of the United States during that period of time where the violence in my life was so intense. I could go into great detail, but I want to get into the word. I just want you to know that every one of us have a day that we were put on this earth, that God has ordained your life to reveal Christ Jesus within you. From that time when I actually had been in my 18th year 
I was led to Christ right before they were going to do a, an electronic lobotomy on my brain. I was in for life. They had, for about 18 months, I'd been out for a few weeks and then back in again and back in again. And then finally, that was it. The waiver of the state was signed. The government documents were established and I was unrecoverable. So they decided to take the cranial front part of the lobal region off of the, the top and insert an electronic probe and kill all the front lobal region of the brain. Everyone that had that procedure done in Delaware as an experiment died from a brain infection. And those results are non-existent because they're buried in Potter's Field. In the back, not even numbered, no names. The people had lost everything in existence and identity to the demonic strongholds that had crippled them. I want to talk about the power that the enemy has had against my life, family, your life, and family and the power of the love of God that has redeemed us and taken us out from the clutch, the hands, the plan of the devil's destruction. You've heard my testimony. You can get it out of the book that I've written called Conquering Your Unseen Enemies. You can Google in YouTube Sid Roth slash Gary Whetstone and, and look at some of the reenactments that Sid had done to share the power of this testimony with the world. But the real of it is, it's an experience. It's your experience. And that is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, turn with me here. It says, And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Do you realize that he required nothing from you to bring you in the power of resurrection? I had no idea that when the minister of the Baptist church had come to see me in the mental hospital, that when he was speaking Jesus, I thought he was cussing at me. When he said sin, I thought he was telling me the procedure they were going to do on my brain. And I had no idea what happened to me when I got up off the carpet with my tears pouring down my eyes at I think I was just about 18 years old at that time. And next thing I knew, God had done a miracle. A miracle that had transformed me. I didn't know what God did, but he knew what I was. He knew what he did. It says, you, I want you to picture your life, the state of your existence, before Jesus came in. Now, you might think you weren't that bad of a person. You might think that things weren't all that far off course, and you really had a control on life. But the Bible declares you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of the world. That is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. According to the pathway, the plan that the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life had for your life, you were under its control and God made you alive in resurrection. It says, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, that now works in the children of disobedience. So this is not a human dimension. This is a spiritual dimension that before our experience with resurrection life, we were on a course of this world and the spirit that had rule and dominance in us is called the spirit of the air, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Verse 3 of Ephesians 2, among whom we all, every single one of us, had our conversation or our lifestyle in times past in the lust of the flesh, 
in the lusts, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. So this demented, tormented, defeated, destroyed nature had dominance, and God raised you in power while you were in that state. But God, verse 4, I want you to thank God that but God, I wouldn't be talking with you today. Your life would not be as enriched and in transformed and revelatory knowledge as it is. Our family wouldn't exist. The church wouldn't exist. The outreaches, the Bible school, the tens of thousands of churches that have been opened, the millions of people that we've led to Jesus, the thousands upon thousands of leaders that we've trained and, and empowered throughout the years of these almost 50 years of serving God, you know, none of it would be there but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. I want you to hear it again. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, has quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and has raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So this power of resurrection not only redeemed you from the curse of the law, but raised you in supernatural power so that all that had been planned by the pursuit of the enemy by horoscopes and necromancy and, and curses and bondage and plans of family and defeated experience in humanity and words of defeat and rejection and all that has gone on in your life. God said, I love you. I love you and sacrifice myself to secure you, to bring you to myself so you could experience my embrace, my place, because I raised you to sit together with me in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, the power of resurrection life, I thank you, is the lot and portion of each and every one of us that we have been as you have directed, given your spirit by faith that we receive the spirit of the living God. We identify in the cross of Calvary, in the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, in the blood of Jesus, in the descending into hell for three days, in the power that raised us and loosed us and freed us from all the plan and pursuit and destructive influence of the enemy. God, you raised us. You've established us in the throne of God. It said, so that in the ages to come, your father might display, show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward you through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we're his masterpiece, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, that God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now let me take a moment and unveil the nature of this passion of our Father, that that which was destined to die, that which was destined for eternal damnation, that which was delusional and inebriating and disgusting, 
connected from the love, the grace, the nature of God. God brought near through the sacrifice of his son and said, I bought you, I own you, you are mine. Now we find ourselves as children of the living God, offspring of God. In Romans chapter 9, verse 26, it says, And it shall come to pass in that place where they said unto them, They're not my people. There shall they be called the children of the living God. I remember growing up in my preteen years, my best friend was Gary Feinberg. And he would go to temple and I wasn't permitted because I was a Goya. I was a, a Gentile. Even though we didn't know at that time that my grandmother had been Jewish, but nonetheless, the, the fact was I was identified out of the covenant of God. And so he would go and be bar mitzvah and carry the Torah up, and he would share with me how the recognition of him stepping in at 13 and, and the recognition of the honor and the, the, the house looking for him to transist over that threshold, becoming a man, and I was out of the covenant of God. I was not known as one that had the ability to be identified as blessed of God because of a genetic bloodline. You, like me, were out called a non-people, but now you're called the children of the living God, who were not a people, but are now the people of God. It says in 1 John 3 verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knew us not, because it knew him not. Now I just want to take a moment and talk about the persecution that Gary Feinberg, his father that owned a pharmacy and a, and a little sarsaparilla they would actually make their own soda behind the, the the little bar there and it was they would throw mud they would put swastikas on their doors they would break the glass call them all types of of ethnic slurs and i, I just couldn't understand as a child why anybody would have a judgment against my friend and you know, as children, we're innocent. We, we believe that, you know, people inherently are going to do good and things are going to work out right. But in reality, they were Jewish. And ultimately, the neighborhood drew them and drove them out of the neighborhood. They went and moved somewhere else that was a more familial, more familiar type of an environment that would accept them as Jews. Now, you might be experiencing persecution today because of your belief in the Lord Jesus. You may feel this sense of distance and discon disconnect from many of the, the relationships that are around you, but I've got good news for you. You are chosen, elect, and anointed by the Most High, separated for the call of God, that is on your life. I, I just pray that one day I get to see Gary and, and Gary Feinberg that I grew up with as a young child in my early elementary years because he was my friend. And I, I pray for him, I pray for his family because God loves the Jews. But I got good news for you, God loves you. He sacrificed his son for you know and believe the love that God has toward you. And you, like me, step over that threshold of acknowledging God delivered me from the clutch and plan of the enemy to walk in the supernatural goodness and grace of God that is ordained for us now and for years to come. So I want you to celebrate with me as I've committed my life to you to see you fulfill your destiny, to see countless hundreds of thousands, 
get trained in the word of God, raise up to do the plan of God to open thousands upon thousands of churches in the earth. And your giving makes all this happen. It is our technology upgrade. As we're taking the training, we're taking the revelatory knowledge, we're taking the ministerial school, and we are multiplying it through our learning management platform. Now on the 8th of March, you'll be able to take a course with me Wednesday night at 7 p.m. You'll log right into the learning platform as a student. And that's what we're sowing into because lives are worth your seed. I'm excited for you. I know you'll be praying for me and my birthday tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to being with you. But I want you to be with me right now and those that we've trained and labored with so you could establish and fulfill all the call and work of God. So give us a call right now at 302-561-6767. In America, 302-561-6767. In Canada, 709-500-6767. Canada, 709-500-6767. Get on the phone. Talk about you have been redeemed. You've been raised. You've been trained. You are sent with grace. And your life is set for a fulfilled day like never before. God bless you. Celebrate with me tomorrow. And I will see you this week in Jesus' name. God bless. Love you.